Let's work on drawing this part that has countersunk holes in it and the circular cutout. I've gotten a start here. I've got some lines two inches and one inch and three quarters and one quarter and so forth. So let me finish drawing this front shape. The front shape has a flat part, uh, a land. Hello? that goes over one. And then it slopes down to that nose there. Okay, so there's the front. Now in the top view, let me start drawing those holes in there. Let me offset the, the hole spacing. So offset 0.45 stop it. Offset 0.45 from there up and then 0.80 offset 0.8 from there to there and there to there. And then those holes are half an inch from the back edge. So offset distance 0.5 select the back edge and there. And those holes, the countersinks are a diameter of one half, aren't they? So C for uh, or a radius of 0.25, let me be tricky. Okay, and I'll click there. It's remembering the size of the circle I just put in, so if I just hit enter I'll get the same size again. Enter, enter. Yay! Okay, these are going to need to turn into center lines. So I'll just do a right crossing window to select all those and I'll go up to my layer list and select center. Okay, fine. Now let me think about drawing this uh, counter countersink in the front view. Let me figure out where my countersink starts. So I'm drawing some construction lines down there. Okay. My small hole is a diameter of a quarter of an inch, so I will offset an eighth of an inch, 0.125, just to lay in where my small hole goes. And I think I'll trim that down so I don't get confused. Now let me try drawing my um, countersink. This countersink needs to be 82 degrees, but if I just enter 82 degrees, that will not be good, will it? And if I so I, I'm thinking, okay, I need to come 41 degrees from here. Is that going to be right or is that backwards? I don't know. Actually, I do, but I'm, I'm just saying oftentimes we get this mixed up. And I'll tell you what I do. I draw a line that is it's 41 degrees off of vertical. What is 90 plus 41? 90 plus 41 is 131. So I'll just make some random length tab. And now that I'm in the degree field, I will type 131, enter. Is that 41 degrees? I'd better check. I don't trust myself. Angle from there to there. Oh yes, it's 41. Yay! Now you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move this 41 degree line I made up to the right location. I now know it's the right angle. I just don't know where to put it. So I'm going to drop it right there where it's supposed to go. 
and I will trim using this hole for my cutter. I will trim it. And now that that's the right angle, I'm going to mirror that line, enter, and for my mirror line, I will use this center line of the hole. Do I want to erase the objects? No. All right. And now I can draw an edge across here. That, that counter sink does have an edge. And now I will trim using this line as my cutter. OK, looking good. That is a good looking countersunk hole, but it's on the wrong layer. So let me do a left window just so I enclose all these lines. So they're all selected. So that I can go up here and select the hidden layer. Oh yeah, that is good. Now this line here is supposed to be a center line. It's supposed to be a center line, but of course it's way too long. So let's see where it is. Okay, so we'll just grab it, click the grip to make it hot, drag it down here, and while it's still selected, I'll select the center layer. All right, that's looking good. Now, let me go over to my side view where I'm going to try to put in this ellipse thing. In the top view, I'm going to have a circular view, and it's going to be a radius of three quarters, radius of three quarters right there. And I will just do a trim there. So that's the right shape. Let's come over here to our side view. We need to figure out how that should look. So we have this, what do you call it? An edge there, that little short edge. And I'll trim that. And now I want to make a line temporarily from my midpoint. This um, ellipse is going to have a radius of three quarters. So I'm going to offset. Be patient with me here. This will work out. I'm going to offset three quarters on each side of that center line because this, this arc is three quarters from the center, three quarters from the center. Okay, now check this out. I'm working back and forth between views. I want to see where that circular cutout lands in my front view. And so to do that, I will need to run a construction line from my top view down to my front view. And now I will trim my front view. And this thing is going to be a hidden line. So I'll move it to the hidden layer. Now, what I'm really after is where is the height of that point right there, where that circular arc went through the front view I'm going to click right there and draw a construction line over into my side view. OK, now I've got a bounding box for my ellipse. Watch this. There's my ellipse. Uh, I'm going to do axis endpoint, I think. Well, it doesn't matter, but I, I like axis endpoint. So I'll go one axis endpoint to the other axis endpoint, and then up to the shorter axis endpoint. And now I only want half an ellipse, so using this edge as my cutter, enter, I will trim out that. Oh, yeah! 
and let's see here uh, I should have stayed with that because I also want to trim those two things I'll get rid of that line and let's see I think I'll get rid of that middle line and now I'll do some trimming I'll trim out that thing look at that that's what my side view should look like now uh, let's see what am I I'm working back and forth between one view and another view I see that I don't have my small circles in my top view I better get those in there those are a quarter of an inch in diameter diameter quarter and now enter to bring up the circle command click enter to get that same size enter to bring up the circle command click enter to bring up the same size now these hidden lines are going to show up in my side view so I think I will be cool and think I will offset those same distances again 0.45 from one edge and offset 0.8 between holes and that will let me copy the nice looking countersink that I did in my uh, what you call it front view I'll copy it over here and now I can erase these lines you might decide that's too crowded I don't know what you think about that whether you think we should do one layer back um, what else well now I could start dimensioning couldn't I and dimensioning and also bringing up the countersink uh, command so let me try that let me go to my dimension commands I'll get my diameter I'll click on the circle oh look I'm in the wrong layer better get my dimension layer I'll click on the circle dimension and I'll type M for the M text option and now I'll start typing three times diameter so I'll type percent percent C whoops percent percent C point two fifty now down to the next line this one needs a counter sink I'm gonna do that at the very end because as we saw before that font will screw up your sizes and styles I'll go times 82 what's degrees I could go up here and see or I could type percent percent D all right now I'll come back to the beginning of this line and now at the very end I will go to my symbols make sure my AIGDT is the font that's selected pick my countersink symbol select copy close and over here right click or control V and backspace to get them all on one line tada close text editor and there I am notice how that countersink symbol is not just some letter of the alphabet it's a special symbol and we got that from the symbol library well I'm not done yet but I'm getting there and I can now start adding some more dimensions